So now that we've got Eagle up and running, uh, first thing we need to do is uh, create our schematic. Uh, and that's going to be either off uh, something you've drawn up um, from your breadboard or from something you found online that you're going to copy. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is click File. And the way I do it is I just do a new schematic and up will pop the screen. This is our schematic creation. There may be um, uh, some windows over here um, that pop up when you first start it. I, they, can, they can be handy, but usually I just prefer a cleaner interface, so I just usually close all of those. Um, what we're going to start with is, by default, there is a um, 0.1 inch or uh, in some case maybe um, one mil. Um, I've always just my head has worked better in inches um, for whatever reason I guess from probably using DIY LC for so long and it being um, pretty much the default grid in that. Um, but this is going to be at 0.1 inches and I'm going to change it to um, I'm going to change it to 0.05 is that just works a little better with some of the parts I have um, and instead of having to do that type that in every time you make a new schematic uh, you can right click on this um, on this grid icon up here and you can click new and this will make an alias for the current grid settings in my case I already have that set up as 0.05 and so that's what we'll set it as now there's a bunch of tools over here on the sidebar and I will explain them as I use them. Um, but first real basically is this is the, uh, you know, the move around tool. This is the info tool and obviously delete. Uh, this is copy and paste. Um, and then the one we're going to first be using is add part. Um, now, as long as you've made your uh, selected library of choice, the one in use and not everything in use. Uh, this should pull up fairly quickly. We'll click that. And this brings up our add part menu. Now, um, first thing we want to do is add resistors. And as you can see here, there's a couple different options, standing, um, eighth watt, a stretched out eighth watt, and a pretty standard quarter watt. And as you can see here, uh, there's a, um, visual representation of what that's going to look like on the board as tied directly to the schematic symbol. This allows us to have um, a direct correlation between the parts that we're applying to our schematic that will then translate into the parts for our board down the road. So I'm going to click OK and I've got a resistor here. So based on my schematic from the circuit that I breadboarded, I'm going to go ahead and add the first couple resistors um, just to get started, something like that. Um, and from there, it can just copy and paste them with this copy. And it'll just, you just put it down and it'll renumber it. Um, now we need to add some capacitors. And that's up here. We're going to use the film capacitors. Uh, again, a couple different styles and sizes and whatnot. Um, this is important since we're using since caps vary in size unless you're using like uh, ceramic or multi-layer ceramic caps in which case this one pretty much works for all of them or this one if you're using the, the small um, orange little ceramic uh, caps so just double check what parts you're planning on using um, just the sizing and stuff because you don't want to want to be trying to use a a film one UF cap and then trying to place it on something like this with other caps and resistors right next to it because it just won't fit. Um, that's what this guy would be for. It's much chunkier. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use this cap and put that there. Um, now, once we've started to get a couple, um, couple components down, we need to start connecting them. Uh, and the way to do that is with this green line, the net tool. Um, and basically what you do, you can use the uh, scroll wheel to zoom, by the way. Um, 
you come down here and these two connect. So I can, you see this green circle pops up and that's the pin that it's going to attach to. Click, come over and click to there. So now that's connected. Uh, do the same over here and that's connected. And then you can kind of reorganize as you, as you see fit as you go along. Um, uh, one thing we do need to know, since this is this is uh, our pull down resistor, it goes straight to ground, and this is our input. We need to mark that. Hey, this is the input, and hey, this is ground. Um, so the way we do that again, add part, and we're going to go down to supply pins. In here, there's a whole bunch. It's probably slightly organized chaos. But it makes sense to me, and hopefully it will make sense to you guys. Um, if not, check out Beans. His might be a little bit more organized. I don't remember. Um, so we're going to grab the ground symbol. And this is just, um, instead of going through and connecting everything that goes to ground with the net tool, this gives us an easy like shortcut, basically, um, to, just to tell, OK, this goes to the ground um, plane or the ground net um, when we're doing the layout. So we just go ahead and attach that there, and that's going to ground. Uh, you can put that, that's probably going to go to ground too. Um, back to add part, we need the input. Now, we, it's not enough to just say, hey, this is the input. We need something to uh, attach that to when we get to the board. So I've made this in pad, uh, in part, have a pad that corresponds with it. And we can just slap that right here and connect it and it will ask you oh do you want to merge this n dollar sign one into supply net in and yes so this is our in and this symbol has a corresponding pad when we get to doing the board layout from here it's basically just go ahead and copy um, parts as needed and copy from the schematic that you are working off of um, I am using a transistor a MOSFET actually to be input. So I need the N27000 model. These are divided up by um, BJTs and FETs uh, and also germaniums down here where that's just a much larger, um, a bigger uh, package here. Um, but most of these are all um, the is it TO92 um, package and adjusted to the various pinouts that that will be that are, are used for that that package um, we're going to use the 7000 here I'm going to go ahead and plop that here we do have also a diode and the reason I designed this um, the circuit for this was to show a, a fairly wide range of parts so you guys can get an idea of to how to use uh, hopefully the majority of this uh, library I am using a Zener diode here for static protection um, and okay so I, I this by default aims to the right um, and I like to have my part numbers on the top or on the left and then the values below that um, so when I mean you can do this and right click and rotate it that's fine but since I want the names on top and the values below you can use this over here it's the mirror tool and you just click on that and it flips it around and it keeps my um, OCD in check um, from here just go up and connect there um, this goes to ground or connects to the source here so we'll connect that up now I have um, a couple, this doesn't go to straight to nine volt, it goes to a uh, voltage reference. So we need to find another supply pin. Um, there's more down here, there's a whole bunch. I'm just gonna use VA because it's the first one. Um, there, so now that's just like the ground that's going to reference um, a different um, net of of, uh, of the circuit that will all connect to each other. Anything that's got this label um, attached to it will all be connected. Um, and this 
does go to 9 volts, so we will add our 9 volt um, 9 volt tag. I do have in here um, just a pad if you need a connection to 9 volt. Um, but we're just going to use this one. We don't need a pad for, for 9 volt at this point. That will come later. Um, okay, so that's coming along. I do need to space this out a little bit more. And I'm just going to start copying and pasting my parts as I go along here and connect them. Um, I generally, you can, you know, put down a part and then um, come over here to the value tool and then right or uh, left click on the part you want to add the value to um, and type that in. As you go, I generally lay down all the parts so I can easily copy and paste as I go along and then go back and um, add my values because there's been so many times when I have been drawing up a schematic, copied a part that already had a value and then forgot to change it and then someone is like, hey, is this resistor really two megs when it's in the, you know, somewhere else where it probably shouldn't be two megs and it's, oh, no, yeah, you're right, that's a typo. So it's just, it's just better to, in my, in my workflow, to label uh, the values later. All right, we've got another voltage reference. I may not have done myself any favors by having multiple vo voltage references in this design, but it works and I think it sounds pretty good. Um, so that's a different one. We'll have to uh, tell the circuit or tell the program what the VB net is down the road, but we'll get to that when we lay out the power supply section. All right, now I need to add uh, an electrolytic cap which is in films or caps elec um, and these come in a bunch of different sizes there's the i think these are five millimeter diameter um, some are flat some are smaller than a little smaller than five mil or five millimeter but five the 0501 was generally going to cover and there's values down here based on the zircon um, uh, product line of what your values would be for this size um, larger ones are in the this uh, 063. Uh, but I'm going to use the 0501 because it's just a 10 UF cap. That's going to go here and connect that up and copy another resistor here, and that also goes to ground. And there. Now this. Um, the way I've designed this pedal is to have um, the option to use a buffered uh, bypass. Um, just never a bad idea to have um, a good buffer built into the middle of your um, in the middle of your uh, signal chain, um, just to keep things going. If you have a bunch of true bypass pedals, um, but again, it's optional. It's up to you. It's all in the ears of the beholder. So we're gonna add another supply pin. Um, and we're going to do pad a pad for this one and these are copied out of out of beans library and modified a little bit but i'm going to use a square and the nl stands for no label or labeled there's the lbl um, and there's round and square versions so i'm going to just use for now the no label one um, and i'll figure it out later where that's going to go and connect that up. You can also rename um, parts with this, the name tool. Like there's like only gonna be one in, so the one is kind of unnecessary. Um, and so I'm, oh, I'm gonna see if I can name this name. Yeah, it's U dollar sign one. So I'm gonna call this, just call it B, cause that's the buffer out. Um, and all right, now it's time to add an integrated circuit. Um, and in this case, we're using just a standard dual through hole package. Um, yeah, all right. So the, by default, it'll be the first first half of a dual op amp. The, the pins one through three um, will be the default one. And it has, you'll see there's there's several more before it cycles back to the first one. So you're going to plop down 
all three pieces of this. This is your power, so eight goes to your supply and four goes to ground. So this is this, and this is the second half of of the um, op amp. Um, in case you are unaware, um, pins one, two, and three, and pins seven, six, and five, or five, six, seven, um, on an IC, there's really no difference. It's a dual op amp. They are basically interchangeable as long as you have the positive and the negative and the output lined up correctly. It'll work however which way. So if you see a schematic that says, oh, use pin, you know, the input's in the pin five first, and when you're laying it out, it makes sense to, makes more sense to input it into three, swap them. It's not a big deal. Um, it's not gonna affect uh, functionality um, at all, um, or it shouldn't anyway. So let's connect that up. And for now, we'll just move these out of the way. So now we need to add the gain control, which is going to be a potentiometer. Uh, I'm just going to use the standard 16 millimeter. Um, there's a couple different options here. This is just the three pads evenly spaced uh, as the um, the lineup with the pinout of a typical alpha 16 millimeter pot. Um, this shows um, the placement of for where the pot should be. Um, this is the one if you're using the long leg um, model. Um, this is just if you want to have it off board and you um, are going to do it with hookup wire. Uh, and this is just a, another variant of that. I'm going to be using um, this variant um, and I'm going to throw that in there. But lug one goes to R8. So use the mirror tool and flip that around. I generally kind of massage things as I go just to get it looking right. Yeah, so that's the that's the first two segments of the circuit, the input buffer and slash gain stage. It's the gain if it's going this way, it's a non-inverting buffer if it if, when it comes out this way.